उनको सर सिखा देना कैसे तू लिख कर कैसा उनको सर सिखा देना कैसे तू लिख कर कैसा उनको सर सिखा देना कैसे तू लिख कर कैसा गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून अभिजीत सर गुड आफ्टरनून
Rajiv sir, good afternoon sir. Ah, good afternoon. Alok sir. Kaise hai sab? Thik hai? Hmm. Ji sir. Sab thik hai. We will. Meri awaz aa rahi hai na? Ah, clear hai sir. Your voice is clear. Sandeep sir, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Dr. Alok sir, please. We will start, sir, within five minutes, as soon as our vice chancellor will join. हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल सर आप ऑडिबल हैं अच्छा ओके ओके नहीं नहीं ओके Sir, very good afternoon. Sir, very good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Rajiv Ranjan ji, Namaskar ji. Subhai se, Sadafi Sandeep, Sandeep Pujur ji. All Namaskar to all the guests of honor and the panelists. So. Why say? Uh, Abhijit Sinha ji, Namaskar ji. So, I think you know you have. Yes. Yeah, good yeah. evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Merry Khyal Se. I think you have visited our university also, sir. Ek baar. Uh, no, I haven't. Ek baar uh, uh, Jaipur ka university visited you. Achha. Jaipur university. Maybe I think you know some of the others. I think you know they have come similarly. Yeah. So, in fact, Mr. Devashish Bose. 
he is actually now. Devashish Bosu, sir, from your same PDA. Yeah. Devashish, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has visited. I think so. He has visited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he was a GM earlier to me. Yeah, yes, sir. He has yeah. retired. He has retired. Yeah, he has retired and now, you know, and, uh, he is with us at the practicing professor. Okay. okay. Professor okay. practice. Now the UGC, you know, now uh -huh. learning people you know, to be. Right, right. Now you need experienced people in the field. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. Very, very good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. Sir, we'll just start, sir. Uh, there is some uh, uh, people are joining, sir. Just we'll start with one to two minutes, sir. No, I think, you know, like uh, uh, Dr. Alok Kumar and the team, you know, didn't take a call if all the guests of honor, all the panelists have joined or not. So, they can DJ and after that, you know, we can start. Uh, only one panelist is not running late. Uh, okay, Tamil Jans will be joined after 10 minutes. So, we will have to start. So, we will have a talk with... Uh, Advocate sir, and sir will say he will have to uh, no worries, we will have to call him. Good afternoon, all and uh, everyone present here. Uh, this is Dr. Alok Kumar. Uh, today, the topic we have chosen uh, and for which we have invited some speaker for a vibrant discussion, a legal and regulatory framework for environmentally sustainable mining. This topic we have chosen uh, because of the reason that the sustainable mining is continuously be emphasized by the government of India in their mining policies as well as in mining regulation. And in the same line, the Supreme Court from time to time has made an emphasis on the sustainable mine. Now, the concept of the environmentally sustainable mining requires the balance between two needs. And one is the state has necessity to operate the mining operation. And another is the protection of environment. So that how the balance is to be maintained between these two uh, desired need. And here with this region, the intervention of the state has been called. And this way, the legal and regulatory framework is being designed so that the environmentally sustainable mining goal can be achieved. In this slide, we have designed the program. We have uh, circulated also the concept note themes to our speakers. 
again uh, our speaker we are very thankful to all the speaker who agree with us to speak on this topic and i hope the, the whole discussion and this whole webinar will come out with some suitable and uh, suitable as well as the suggestion which can be practically in, implemented so with this uh, concept uh, introduction i would like to invite our vice chancellor professor ors rao sir for introduction of this topic as well as to welcome our all guest speakers well, no, th thank you very much dr sir, dr. Over dr. To you. for the uh, very nice introductory kind of you know, uh, sort of you know, introduction to the entire you know, seminar it's a very very important topic in today's uh, times not only today's times it's going to be for all time to come you know this is an important topic that is the sustainable mining because the uh, not only in mining in all walks of life so far the entire world you know they never looked at the sustainability and always you know, we looked at you know um, me myself and now and we never looked at you know what is going to happen tomorrow and the next generation sort of not only in terms of conservation of the resources but also in terms of you know on how we preserve the nature into that so to that extent it's a very very important topic and this topic becomes uh, all the more important because uh, uh, on one hand you know i would like to welcome uh, all the panelists the eminent panelists that we have got for uh, to the today's uh, interesting you know, seminar and the panel discussion. And uh, uh, at the same time, and also we have got a lot of uh, participants that are participating in today's seminar. My hearty welcome to, to all of you. So at the outset, you know, just to introduce our university, Ikhwa University, Jharkhand, we are part of the Ikhwa group. And in Jharkhand, we are a, a university as per the state act. And we have uh, in our university, we operate, we have, we offer the programs, undergraduate, postgraduate, and PhD programs in multiple disciplines. So we are there into management, we are there into the where we have got a, a BBA, MBA, become that kind of programs, and MBA and PhD. Then likewise, we have got engineering, there we have got mechanical, computer science, and importantly, mining, we have got there. Then we have got uh, the IT where we have got you know, courses like you know, the BCA, MCA. And then we also have got you know, a discipline of the law, where we offer the programs of uh, BA LLB and BBA LLB, both integrated law programs and also the LLB. So in with this context, so this topic, what we have taken, you know, it is uh, interdisciplinary. No doubt, you know, there are set of you know, the regulatory implications that are there. But the regulatory implications, we got to look at it from the various perspectives. I think that's where I think you know this topic becomes important, you know, for all of us. So if we look at the the India's uh, national mineral policy that was enunciated in 2019, so there it says the natural resources, which includes the minerals, they are a shared inheritance where they say that state is the trustee for that. It could be land, it could be water, it could be the minerals, all of them, you know, the government is a trustee on behalf of the people. And it is the responsibility of the state to ensure that, you know, the all the generations, including the future generations, they should receive the benefits of this inheritance. So I think that is a fundamental principle I think we got to look at, while of course so many other aspects that are there. But at the same time, the paradox with the mining is, mining just like, you know, it's not like water, water at least we can recycle. But in the case of a mining, what happens is, mining, you know, what happens is, you know, whatever mine that is there, you know, we just sort of explore, exploit that and consume it. And after that, there's nothing like recycling of the kind of a mines and minerals into that. And, uh, Today, what happens is, you know, any mineral, when once, you know, sort of we take out the mineral, it contributes a lot to the world and global economy or the Indian economy. Because after that, you know, like uh, the, um, the mineral, what we take out, you know, it takes various forms and shapes. And so that ultimately the economy gets affected and the economy grows also because of that. 
sort of, but at the same time, sort of, you know, every, if you take every aspect of the kind of a mining activity, starting with, you know, the kind of exploration, mining, and, you know, you know sort of logistics and also consumption, there is social impact, there is also environmental impact. I agree with the environment is important, but at the same time, there's a huge social impact because whenever there is a kind of a mine that is sort of explored, sort of a lot of people get displaced. Sort of while some loss are there, you know, as to how to take, make sure that in all of them are rehabilitated, you know, properly into that, you know, sort of maybe there a lot has to be done. Lots of cases also have much doubt of that. So much so in some cases, you know, the mining got stalled over a period of time. After some time, you know, like there were court cases and, you know, court itself has come down and said that you have to stop it into that. It includes some of the mines that were started with some of the foreign companies. So a few kind of issues that you see with regard to the mining is one aspect is, you know, how much to mine? Because after all, you know, maybe so much of underground mining, they're out of that, you know, like I must be able to mine what is required. And then how much, you know, the environment can sustain. I think that is one part that is there. Similarly, the second issue is with regard to the revenues. Because whatever mining that is there, you know, sort of ultimately, you know, sort of the government must get royalties. And the royalties are used you know, for the benefit of the people. So this again, it has got legal implications over a period of time. In fact, all of us are aware of the various issues that have come with regard to the, on how the kind of a mining leases are given. So in the last you know, few years, you know, a lot of good things that have happened is, now particularly with the coal mines, you know, the public options are there. You know. So with the result, you know, at least the government doesn't lose so much of the money. The third aspect is with regard to the kind of, you know, how do you kind of ensure that, you know, the inequality is reduced into that, you know, and the natural wealth of all the people is sort of, you know, protected into that. So these are, you know, a few kind of issues I think, you know, maybe we have to take care, you know, when we are looking at, you know, the sustainable mining and also where the kind of a regulations play an important role into that, you know. So there is something like an environmental kind of a footprint somebody has to look at. Similarly, how the various stakeholders get benefited. It could be something like, you know, the government who gets the royalties. And it could be the, if it is a private party or any corporation or kind of a company that is there, how they get benefited. Similarly, the people that get sort of displaced and how you take care of them. Plus also the people that are living in the surrounding areas. If there's a pollution or something, you know, yes, there are also stakeholders. Or how do you take care of those people to that? So sort of considering that you know, it's a very complex issue. And this is where you know, I'm so happy that you know, our faculty of law or organizers, they thought it you know, fit that you know, we should have the multiple stakeholders that are part and parcel of you know, the panel discussion. So here we have got you know, sort of a regional controller of you know, mines from the Indian Bureau of Mines. Then we have got you know, Sri Rajiv Ranjanji, you know, who is coming from the kind of a forestry experience. Because there is, you know, forestry and, you know, mining, there's a very intimate relationship. He has got a wide experience into that. Likewise, you have got, you know, Sri Abhijit Sinhaji, he's the general management from the environment and, you know, the same PDA. In fact, they are the ones that decide the policies and, you know, framework and planning for the various mines. And they, you know, sort of the environment is something they take as a very, very important part. And also sort of the advocate, you know, Amit Das, you know, high court. And, you know, he has been, you know, a legal counsel for a lot of mining companies, including, you know, sort of a CCL and various companies. So that way, he also has been seeing what are the kind of challenges and issues that are coming up. So that way, we have got, you know, a panel, a rich panel, eminent people in their own kind of discipline. And I'm very confident they can, you know, contribute a lot on how to address the various issues, you know, with regard to the kind of, you know, mining and making it, you know, sustainable to that, you know. So with these uh, few words, you know, so I thank the organizers, you know, for organizing this and over to Dr. Alok Kumar. Thank you, uh, Vice Chancellor, sir. Rightly said, uh, the main important issue which I forget to mention is that social displacement which is to be made and that will be also a prime concern so far as the sustainable mining is concerned. Uh, with this, uh, we will have to move further. And moving further, I would like to firstly invite uh, Sandeep Salil Pudur, sir, who is the regional control of mines in uh, Indian Bureau of Mines. Uh, sir has prepared a PPT so that 
for giving a overall picture of sustainable mining is be get clear to all the uh, participant as well as all the attendees so i would like to request uh, sandeep salil kujur sir to please explain the overall concept as you have to prepare before us sir over to you okay so good evening to all of you uh, especially dr alok and uh, dr rao and all the other dignitaries who are there uh, i am very much uh, privileged to give you the glimpses of uh, indian bureau of mines which is looking after the sustainable mining in the mainly the major minerals not the minor the Uh, minerals are definitely categorized into two or three parts that is one is coal am i audible or not yeah, you are audible ah. you are audible so Please. there are major mineral major mineral are like bauxite iron ore lead zinc gold silver uh, limestone and the minor minerals are uh, that is sand and uh, uh, stones rough stones uh, like that and the coal and another is atomic minerals in the legislation it is divided into that type so first uh, how the sustainable sustainable mining is practiced in case of a major mineral and how the regulatory framework is there and how it is uh, taking care of the sustainable mining i am mainly going to speak on that first uh, we have to see that uh, rule mcdr that is mine um, uh, mineral conservation and development rule 2017 it says that every holder of mining list shall take a possible every possible precaution for undertaking sustainable mining while conducting prospecting mining beneficiation and metallurgical operation in the area and each and every lessee the owner has to submit in a prescribed format that format i am going to discuss in this year Uh, in a uh, prescribed format uh, for the year financial year it is the financial year before 30 30 june every year with the now uh, amendment has been made uh, 34a has been uh, introduced in the recent amendment that is drone survey has to be submitted with that a uh, uh, drone survey one sop is there and uh, drone survey and the sustainable mining star rating based on that star just you go back ah yes yes you stay here and uh, self assessment that is a self assessment and they give marks how much how much they score on a particular section and then the validation will be done by indian bureau of mines next please so you see in the general information Uh, mine code name of the mine lessee address email id forest land uh, how much is the private land revenue land everything is there and then uh, next uh, all it is same the information about the mines about the lease basically and uh, whether it is a captive or non captive then there you uh, the lessee has to give the land uh, lease area utilization that is how much land it is used for mining mineral storage suppose a beneficiation plant is there then the mineral beneficiation plant area township telling pond railway line or roadways and then uh, how much uh, that uh, lessee is using for topsoil preservation because topsoil is the only soil which can uh, give the uh, which have the fertility and total area everything has to right in a particular format <laughs> that is this is online format and then uh, the royalty and the dead rent paid suppose the mines is running then royalty otherwise it is a dead rent and then the contribution to dmf dmf is the district mineral uh, fund and then contribution to nmt nmt is the national mineral exploration trust a fund is there Uh, we uh, uh, 2% of the royalty amount is to be deposited uh, 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 in a in that trust and the government is uh, providing that uh, other companies to go for the prospecting operation because prospecting needs lot of money 
and then uh, next uh, what are the clearances clearance means just wait uh, consent to operate consent to establish approved quantity validity forest clearance suppose the mines is uh, in the forest area then forest clearance is there or not we have to see uh, we are looking after uh, all these things then whether the land is purchased how much land is acquired within the lease area and then uh, how much amount is paid by the uh, company to the land owner then now this is the that is the managing impact at mine level so each company has to form a sustainable development unit at the mine 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 level uh, it uh, comprises of finance uh, people csr hrd environment uh, heads of for ensuring the sustainable development framework principle then he has to form every company uh, that marks is there uh, suppose they are formed so it will get three marks so marks is also there then uh, total expenditure incurred in the sdf sustainable development framework work suppose whatever the csr activity or other things they are doing that is 10% of the royalty amount suppose a company is paying in the financial year 10 crores means 1 crore they have to invest in the uh, for the society then they will get 5 marks it depends how much uh, percentage they are utilizing so this is over and above the ea uh, uh, royalty amount they have to do the expenditure in that but this includes the excludes the contribution towards dmf and the nmt this amount does not uh, include that one then uh, uh, csr and exploration how much exploration there because without exploration without proving the mineral for the next uh, future you cannot uh, you cannot ensure the sustainability so to all the for prospecting how much uh, prospecting of the total lease area is done there are uh, united nation framework classification for uh, uh, exploration is there uh, if it is 100% of the unfc classification if 100% exploration is achieved then uh, the company will get 10 marks and uh, how much exploration they are proposed in the mining plan that is also coming in that and then uh, what is the exploration category there are mainly uh, four categories g1 g2 g3 and g4 so g1 is the highest uh, degree of uh, exploration so if uh, they have explored full area to g1 category then they will get uh, five marks otherwise uh, accordingly the marks get reduced next and then use of uh, gis or mining plan software in Uh, assessing the reserve and the resource and the planning of the mining activity if they are using the software then it is five marks then comes to the production so this production is based on the annual proposed production in the mining plan a mining plan is made up for five year next five years suppose uh, Uh, i am submitting a mining plan for uh, for uh, next five years means uh, 23 24 24 25 like that five years production proposal future five year production uh, proposal has to be submitted to indian bureau of mines and get it approved and based on that suppose they are proposing uh, any amount it depends uh, all the other uh, geological features we look after that then we ac accept that okay this is the uh, proposed uh, uh, production you have to carry out so suppose they are achieved 90 to 100% accordingly the marks is allotted and then the bench height width how much is the height of the bench width of the bench it is very much uh, required uh, in case of a safety point of view for a mining activity this is an underground though there are two separate uh, one is for uh, open cast and another for underground so uh, underground uh, underground uh, mines will uh, give the 
marks uh, self assessment in the underground chapter and the open cast mines will give the self assessment in the open cast chapter next this is also underground same thing is there because uh, i am uh, taking the open cast because that will be easier otherwise sap edit everything i have to explain but uh, there are some proposal and how much they have achieved so accordingly the marks is allotted next it is same next then uh, subsidence it is for underground then uh, here okay so now uh, how much is the uh, violation for the last year suppose uh, for last financial year they have to submit the online assessment form for in the uh, current uh, year so in the last year if dgms director general of mine safety had given the violation and they have not complied so it depends if complied and not complied just wait so four marks for ipm and four marks for dgms is there next then zero waste mining this is a important part uh, in case of a sustainable development how much uh, the uh, waste rock they are utilizing waste minerals means the mineral which is below the cut off grade they are utilizing it depends uh, how much marks they will get and how much uh, how uh, how the waste dumping is followed in the mines that is uh, looked after then the alternative disposal of the minor mineral suppose a uh, mineral may contain a minor mineral uh, the waste rock overburden that can be utilized for other purpose like uh, preparation of road backfilling backfilling of a dump uh, means uh, uh, low area so that part if they are utilizing then uh, accordingly the marks is allotted to them then uh, use of separate means mineral means the uh, requirement is suppose uh, 40% uh, suppose they are utilizing up to 35% so accordingly the uh, so they have to do the blending and that uh, for blending purpose also the marks is allotted and then the beneficiation suppose low grade mineral is brought to the uh, required grade mineral so accordingly the marks is allotted next then environment uh, compliance suppose how much check dams they have formed as per the uh, proposal and achievement is how much and the garnet drain uh, so if their proposal is uh, suppose uh, 200 meter and they have made 150 meter they accordingly the marks is given and then the garland drain because to it is required that none of the uh water which is not uh, supposed to go out from the mines it is going out without any check or without settling in so that part uh, this uh, chapter is covering so environmental compliances are also there next then tailing disposal most of the mines uh, big mines are having uh, beneficiation plants so they are washing so how they are disposing the tailing means water loaded with the uh, low grade uh, minerals they, how they are uh, tailings are disposed that part is covered in this chapter and then how is the tailing is utilized in the future then uh, environment in the mines whether water sprinkling in the whole road to suppression for the dust is there and the wet drilling is uh, going on and the mist spray in the crusher and covering of inactive dump with the plantation so the uh, the dump which is not in use dump means waste dump which is not in use whether it is uh, plantation is done and then the ground water quality so ground water uh, for monitoring of ground water they have to install a piezometer piezometer and they have to take reading throughout the year uh, how much is the effect of mining activity in the ground water they have to observe Uh, for that also some marks is there then how much is the quality how much quantity of water is recycled every year in the uh, for effective utilization suppose they are uh, using for agriculture drinking water township supply so all these things are covered in this chapter and then zero leakage of uh, water 
we have to see how, uh, in the supply line if they are leakage or something like that then the marks is detected accordingly and drip irrigation also practice uh, emphasized to do in this chapter then ambient air quality each quarter quarterly the each and every mines has to carry out a, a, a environment monitoring for uh, water soil uh, uh, air and sound they have to carry out from the nabl accredited laboratory if all the readings are within the limit then uh, accordingly the marks is allotted and uh, it is not only inside the mining area, but it is in the core zone and the buffer zone also. Then uh, it has to be within the uh, ground vibration. Suppose for blasting, if they are going for blasting, then ground vibration is there. So how much is the vibration? They have to carry out the study yearly so that uh, they have to show how much is the ground vibration in the nearby area. Then energy audit in the mining area. Energy audit each year they have to carry out the audit so that uh, regularly audit that is that has to be done by a certified electrical engineer having a energy auditor certificate and uh, he will give uh, some uh, uh, suggestion and that has to be implemented by the mine management and uh, what are the suggestion and what are the implementation they have done. These are the energy audit. Based on that, the marks are allotted in each and every. Then the violation uh, complied and the violation by DGMS, MOEF, State uh, Pollution Control Board, Central Groundwater Board. Suppose whatever they are, uh, suppose violation is there and if the compliance is done, then accordingly the uh, points are scored on, in this uh, section. Next. That this is the only summary of the marks. It is automatically uh, totaled in the online format. Next. Then backfilling. Suppose mining activity is carried out and after the exhaust, mineral get exhausted. How the backfilling is carried out the, by the waste rock and the plantation is done. Uh, because each and every mine has to backfill because uh, backfill and plantation, reclamation and rehabilitation, restoration of the mined out area. In this chapter, we have to see then uh, whether they are forming a water reservoir for the uh, groundwater recharge because mining area are generally huge. So water catchment is more. So whether that water is utilized for the uh, for future or not that uh, it is looked after in this chapter and then the rainwater harvesting how much uh, they are uh, practicing the rainwater harvesting for the groundwater recharge then uh, in this is uh, in this chapter we see the uh, land uh, landscape restoration the backfield area how the backfield area is maintained the plantation and the water recharge how much plantation, how much sapling is planted in the current year, how much area is uh, reclaimed and the uh, in and around the mining area they have to do the plantation in the 7.5 meter barrier also so that the dust and the other thing will not uh, go out of the mining area. Then agroforestry is also there. Uh, suppose uh, they have practicing agroforestry uh, forestry so that uh, the nearby tribal people and the other people in the local people get some employment out of that that uh, part there uh, we are looking in this then uh, for the soil uh, soil whether they have taken any test for soil conservation and the treatment of problematic soil etc this chapter uh, these chapter are actually some part where it is required and some part whether it, whether it is applicable and not applicable also are uh, the online uh, format it is given then eco tourism in mining area you will find that uh, uh, after mining activity that area is having uh, uh, that is of no use so uh, how the 
mining company is developing that area into eco tourism uh, some uh, water harvesting pond and some other uh, facility and the garden uh, garden and some for the visit of tourist so that the local people will get the uh, sustainable employment uh, in the future then uh, it is dump area stabilized how the dump are stabilized so that there won't be any uh, failure of the dumps because uh, that uh, is very much important and then uh, how the project people um, uh, dr rao was telling how the uh, uh, people have uh, uh, got uh, displaced due to mining activity so whether they are utilizing all the displaced person employment has been given to the displaced person or not that uh, is also covered in this uh, chapter and we are looking uh, we are seeing how much employment is there how much is the percentage of local employment uh, etc in this uh, chapter next and uh, it is same how much and social impact assessment has been carried out or not and uh, important thing is whether the public grievance redressal mechanism is in place for the mining company or not we have uh, we are looking after that also and whether it is pr properly displayed in the uh, mines gate and the notice board it is displayed or not we are uh, uh, looking uh, during the inspection of star rating sustainable development uh, framework uh, uh, inspection then uh, whether the owner agent and owner and the uh, uh, company owners whether their participation in the mining area is there or not uh, for development of the community uh, they have to show us ki they have also coming to this area to see uh, how much uh, sustainability work is going on so that uh, part uh, they have to show then how much uh, csr project uh, number of beneficiaries uh, beneficiaries different different uh, you can do lot of csr project uh, in the mining area and accordingly they have to write uh, what are the activities they are uh, taken in the last year and uh, how much uh, how many beneficiaries are there then uh, drinking water and agriculture whether the uh, they are supplying the drinking water to the local village and agriculture uh, water supply is there or not how much uh, water they are uh, treated and the water is supplied and then the uh, health of the mine worker how much how many uh, uh, people in the, working in the mining area has been examined as per the dgms in the last year uh, that uh, data they have to give and the hygiene and sanitization and public health initiative means uh, what are the support you are giving to the health sector for the nearby village and the mining um, mining people and the vocational training uh, this section uh, gives the skill development suppose how, how many uh, uh, future generation uh, whether skill uh, skill development uh, program the company is organizing and the lessee is organizing or not that part is covered in this and the education and literacy uh, how much support they are giving uh, in this education and literacy for uh, local people that uh, is also looked after in this uh, section and then the livelihood on socio economic standard improvement how many uh, self help group and the other uh, suppose uh, uh, fish farming or anything like that they can do so that part how much support they are giving uh, to the local people that part is covered and then uh, one more thing is that the connectivity of the road whether the company is preparing some road for the connectivity of the local people and the mining area connectivity because uh, connectivity in the mining area is the important factor and uh, most of the mining area are located in the remote location so whether the roads and other things are provided by the uh, lessee or not then uh, this is the local manpower uh, chapter where how much is the percentage they are uh, employing in the mining area 
uh, mines how much uh, local employment they are giving and then uh, next then is, this is the swasta uh, our uh, government is uh, emphasizing more on the swasta campaign so adoption of odf open uh, defection free in the mining area whether it is there or not then odf in the school and uh, hospital drinking water supply and uh, uh, cleanliness of the workshop appropriate disposal of the used oil means uh, mobile other things garbage collection uh, appropriate points are there for garbage collection providing drinking water to the mining other things are also in there and then the display i had already told that the quarterly they have to carry out the environment monitoring and that monitoring report has to be displayed by the company in the notice board in the prominent location either in their website or in the uh, mines main gate so that uh, uh, each and every stakeholder can see and the availability of sdf other information in the in their company website then internal auditing internal auditing means whatever data they are submitting that has to be audited or audit report is required to be submitted along with this uh, 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 format and then uh, there are uh, whether the company is iso certified or sas sa8000 energy audit undertaken by bureau of energy standards and then sustainability report and swasta report they are preparing and they are giving or not that uh, we are looking in this chapter then overall performance there are four modules are there and four uh, modules uh, total appli applicable marks and how much modules they have scored so accordingly the star rating is given to the mines and star rating is five star four star three star and two star no star so uh, this is uh, uh, earlier one number of mine how many days the mines was in operation it was a mine has to submit the star rating if it, it has worked for more than 180 days but that uh, rule has been changed uh, if it is suspended by government then uh, a mine owner cannot do anything but uh, now every working mines has to how many days they have worked it uh, is immaterial but they have to submit the star rating and the star rating is validated by the indian bureau of mines a inspection is detailed inspection of all the criteria has is carried out by indian bureau of mines and then they give the marks how much marks they are supposed to get and how much marks they are giving self assessment and then a validation is going then after that validation the uh, company get five star four star and three star this is the requirement for minimum three star requirement is there suppose a, a, a company or the lease or the lessee has achieved less than 60% then the mines will get suspended until and unless that uh, star rating is achieved the mines will get suspended and the mining activity will be stalled only uh, which is required to be done uh, they can do and this is the certificate they have to give by the uh, submit by the lessee so these are the only glimpses i can see because it is a very uh, long chapter so uh, you can see it is a very a uh, lengthy one and uh, indian bureau of mines and uh, ministry of mines in uh, is very keen in sustainable development and they are uh, adding uh, each and every year based on the recommendation of the committee uh, what are the things which can be added to the star rating so that the uh, uh, further improvement can be done or not thank you thank you sir with this uh, deliberation we come to know that how sustainable mining framework is to be taken seriously by the government of india and they are designed under the mcdr rule 2017 these kind of criteria and every mining operation need to be carried out keeping in view their different major minerals minor minerals 
in their classification they need to be uh, conduct this kind of audit and by this audit a rating is to be given by the uh, ministry and on that basis the it is to be decided by the government whether that mining operation need to be carried out and that are keeping the sustainable mining framework or not with this we have come to know about the initiative under mcbr rule 2017 for the purpose of sustainable mining now i would like to invite uh, gm environment cm pdi avijit sinha sir for uh, giving their views in respect of adapting environment friendly solution for sustainable mining in a mining sector how this issue is to be addressed by the mining sector regarding adopting environmental friendly techniques sir over to you thank you dr alok kumar and uh, mr shikaj kujur had a wonderful ppt presentation and uh, all the members of the panel esteemed guest my subject as uh, shri alok kumar has said was adopting environmental friendly technology solution for sustainable mining as you all know mining is one of the major contributors towards the growth and sustenance of human civilization in this context coal mining has played a special role since ancient time as coal is a major source of energy for the development of society at this present moment more than 75% of india's energy needs are met by coal energy and electricity should be taken differently energy is the total energy electricity is the uh, electricity is produced from energy of coal however coal mining has its own downsides as you may, you may all know it leads to the degradation of land especially in open cast mine where large tracts of lands are used during production of coal from mines and subsequent transportation of coal significant pollution is generated the pollution includes land degradation air pollution water pollution noise pollution besides having impact on socio economic status as uh, professor rao was saying of the area and flora and fauna it is of the more utmost importance that the areas in and around the coal mines are subjected to different mitigation measures so as to make life of the community living around these areas livable and easy and so that it it can also uh, generate a whole adjoining ecosystem decommissioning or closing of a mine also involves removal of environmental and health and safety hazards for the mine closure open cast mine owners have to deposit 9 lakh rupees per hectare uh into an escrow fund managed by the coal controller of india this mine closure fund provides security for the closure and decommissioning activities the environmental clearance or ec and forestry clearance fc provisions need strict implementation and monitoring and there is a need to do more and go beyond this provision for better environmental sustainability using environmental mitigation measures in a right and sustainable way will not only provide a better environment to people working and residing in the nearby areas but also improve the overall image of the coal sector in the country sustainable development policy shall pro promote and pursue sustainable mining integrating environmental socio cultural and economic factor which comprises the basic fabric of sustenance in our society it also should incorporate views and opinions of stakeholders ensuring compatibility and implementation the attempt i'm being made to shape a new future through a set of determined goals and to bring sustainability into focus point the objective of the sdp can be encompassing in mainly three components 
environmental sustainability, which comprises of uh, decreasing effect on environment when carrying out production activities, biodiversity preservation activities, sustainable use of resources. Then comes socio-cultural sustainability, which is more focused on social initiative, community health, education system, and, and employs motivation development, drinking water, sustainable livelihood sanitation, promoting sports, women empowerment, improve occupational health and production. Then comes economic sustainability, which carries in, uh, within it economic stability, effective risk management, improved product and quality service, service quality, strong management services, and technological development. As you may all know, there are two types of mines, open cast and underground. Uh, environment impact of open cast mine are as follows. Very large amount of waste rock are created, which creates an environmental issue in the, uh, what I call, how to handle this amount of rock material. Major disruption of surface. You are digging a big pit. So a pit footprint is there, waste dumps, high visual impact, especially in strip mining. After closure, rehabilitation may be difficult, slow, and costly. Open pit mines also catch rain, making them vulnerable to flooding, which may severely disrupt production. There is a air pollution due to coal handling, coal transportation from coal stockpiles. There is water pollution and groundwater depletion. There is also a change in land profile and impact on flora and fauna. Socio-cultural impact, economic disparity, socio-economic conflict, cost of living. There is a displacement of people and loss of livelihood. Next come to the environment impact of underground mining. It is much less environmentally destructive means of gaining access to our ore deposit. However, it often entails greater safety risk than strip mining, including open pit mining. Uh, the environmental impacts are air pollution due to the coal handling, road transportation, and from coal stockpiles, release of obnoxious gases, that is methane, water pollution, acid mine drainage, land degradation due to subsidence, uh, leading to change in land profile, destruction of flora and fauna, caving in and rockfall. There is also a severe safety issues in underground mining. There are also a displacement of people and loss of li livelihood. The new technologies which have been ad uh, adopted to reduce the damage caused due to mining are, are uh, the few of these are being uh, read out here. One is we are uh, surface miners are being used to dig out coal instead of drilling and blasting. In pit crushers are being used so that no crushing is carried out on the surface. There is a concept of first mile connectivity in which coal is transported from the mines to the siding by conveyor belts. Large capacity shovels and dumpers are being used so that the fleet of trucks can be reduced. In underground mines, continuous miners are being used to address the safety issue. For sustainable mining, the following practices have to be adopted. Air pollution control. Uh, it will take installation of fixed mist sprayers, for cannons, fixed or mobile, along the dust generating sources, that is hall roads, stockyards, railway siding, 
coal handling plants, etc. Mobile fog, fog cannons and mist sprayers deployed along, along the haul roads and other transportation routes. Old and dry fogging system and fixed type sprinklers installed in crushers and various transfer points along the conveyor route in coal handling plants, bunkers, etc. And black topping of roads. It's one of the most important part as a black top road are a le less polluting source than rough roads, as you may call it, or roads. Avenue plantation has to take place to stop the dust at its source so that it not, may, it not spread. There is a water control for pollution control. Uh, mine water should pass through two levels of sedimentation before utilization or discharge of mine water. ETPs or effluent treatment plants of sufficient capacity with oil and grease trap for treatment and reuse of mine water. These mine can be supplied for drinking and agriculture use to nearby villages. Sewage treatment plants of sufficient capacity for treatment of domestic sewage for township and colonies. Treated water from these STPs can be used for various horticulture projects. There is also a concept of zero, zero discharge from all mines. We do not discharge water outside, we use it. Next, land reclamation. So you have to have biological reclamation of the mine lease area. Biological reclamation stabilizes the external OB dumps and prevents water pollution by arresting siltation. Satellite surveillance has to be carried out look regularly to see if the biological reclamation is being carried out for, for regularly. The further the following has to be taken care of. All mines have to have valid EC and consents. Prior environmental clearance for new and expansion projects from MOEF and CC under EPA. 1986 and EIA 2006 and subsequent amendments should be there. Prior forest clearance from MOEF and CC in compliance of the FC Act 1980. Obtaining consent, CTE and CTO and hazardous waste authorization from SPCB, State Pollution Control Boards. Submission of six monthly compliance remote to MOEF and CC against the stipulated EC conditions. Regular monitoring and submission of reports on environmental parameters in compliance of EC, CTO, CTO conditions of the two statutory body. These, if these things are carried out and people take care or the mines authority take care to do these things, a uh, sustainable development of our minds can be carried out. That's what uh, I have to say today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, valuable guidance in respect of adopting scientific technology, so far as scientific mining solution for the purpose of sustainable mining. You have suggested so many technology what has been uh, carried out in so far as the coal mining particularly is concerned. Again, uh, by uh, listening our two speakers, both are from the mining uh, industry background, we would like to invite our third speaker, that is uh, Rajiv Ranjan sir, that has uh, given their contribution to the service Indian Forest Service and sir retired from January 2002 as a principal chief conservator of forest. Uh, sir has a wide experience so far as this uh, mining operation clearance is to be concerned. In this context, we advised sir to please give uh, in respect of criteria of environment impact assessment and how you feel being a, a, a forest uh, officers that the, these criteria will be certainly be helpful for carried out the mining operation, keeping in view the complete uh, 
land management as well as biodiversity management and social impact socio uh, impact management sir please uh, thank you uh, alok sir uh, after having a uh, lot of information from mr salil and mr abhijit i think i am supposed to focus on a specific issue called environment in, environmental impact assessment uh, respected professor rao sir vice chancellor dr alok kumar ji uh, distinguished speakers of the webinar mr abhijit sinha ji salil kujur ji amit das ji our faculty coordinators divya utkarsh ji and amarjit sinha ji uh, all the other distinguished participants and students of the university warm greetings to you all uh i am honored indeed to have been bestowed upon this responsibility of introducing the concept of environmental impact assessment keeping mining in focus i would like to make my presentation through a powerpoint uh, i hope i have got a permission alok sir sir please share nahi uh, host host only the host can share only host can share hai sir usko uh, ticket dene se ho jayega host has authority to say allow other participant to say sir okay sir. has to allow please uh, please give us uh, sir two minute time we will have to make you host <clears throat> सर विद इन मिनट सर सर नाउ यू विल सी एस सर इज इज दिजिबल सर प्लीज विजिबल सर यूल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लाइट आई वु लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस द आइडिया ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट वॉट इट इज and uh, what are its implications it is just a minute
कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है हम आ, ये शेयर करें क्या पीपीटी हेलो यस सर यस सर 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 सेंड इट टू आलोक प्लीज इट विल बी गुड इट विल बी गुड ही आई विल शेयर इट Kindly mail me, sir. Uh, I can share. WhatsApp, WhatsApp पे भेज दे रहे हैं. हाँ जी sir, please. ठीक है, I have sent it. So now it is visible, to sir. To you, sir. Yes. Sir. First right. Yeah. Sir. Now, sir, you can start. Uh, Please. Next screen. Yeah. Next screen. Uh, sir. Environmental impact assessment. It is basically an assessment of the impact of any planned activity on the environment. including impacts on biodiversity vegetation and ecology water and air basically it is a process of identifying predicting and evaluating the likely environmental socio economic cultural and other impacts of a proposed project or development to define mitigation actions next the outcome of eia is basically it is a, a kind of environmental statement or environmental report this provides information to decision makers prior to issuing an environmental clearance so that they can properly assess the project's impacts on both the environment and the people next uh, about how how did it evolve uh we should also make note of its history its uh, history globally in 1969 the us national environmental policy act this required an environmental assessment of all major federal projects that could affect the quality of human environment 
In 1972, as we all know, there was Stockholm Declaration at the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment, where the UN General Assembly agreed upon a declaration containing 29 principles concerning the environment and development. Globally, the EIA process really took off after the mid 80s. In fact, in 1989, the World Bank adopted this process for major developmental projects, which they were funding to borrower countries. And the borrower countries were expected to carry out EIA study before getting sanction of the World Bank for the project. As far as India is concerned, uh, first, it, 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 it was basically not termed as EIA, but in 1976-77, Planning Commission asked the Department of Science and Technology to examine the River Valley projects from environmental angle. Then in 1986, Environment Protection Act was enacted. This, this enactment was pursuant to the Stockholm Declaration of 1972. We took, in fact, 14 years to make a legislation with regard to environmental protection. In the same year, EPA rules were framed. In later years, uh, all of us must be hearing about EIA notifications. These EIA notifications issued by the government of India, they're issued under section three of the Environmental Protection Act and rule five of EPA rules. No, please, please go back. Section three of the act provides that the central government shall have the power to take measures for improving the quality of environment and preventing and controlling environmental pollution. Similarly, Section 3.2 provides that measures, the measures to control environmental pollution may include restriction of areas in which industries, operations, processes, et cetera, shall not be carried out or shall be carried out with certain safeguards. And Rule 5 has uh, gives, gives the government, the central government, power to issue notification. Under this uh, Section 3 of the Act and Rule 5 of the rules, all the EIA notifications have been issued. In fact, two notifications till date. EIA notification 1994 was the first notification which was issued by the government of India. Uh, in fact, first of all, it, through this notification, the concept of impact assessment was envisaged and it was integrated into the legal system. Through this notification, environmental clearance was made mandatory. The notification also contained the list of uh, industries, processes, etc., which require environmental clearance. The project report submitted for consideration of the government of India should include an EIA report, that is environmental impact assessment report, environmental management plan, and details of public hearing. We will talk about these things uh, slightly later on. In, in this notification, impact assessment agency was created, and that was Ministry of Environment and Forests. Then in the year 1994, cl climate change was not there. That is why I'm, uh, I'm uh, mentioning MOEF. 1994 notification was amended 12 times in a span of 11 years. So we can uh, very well imagine how dynamic this uh, system of uh, environmental clearance has been in our country. Later on in the year 2006, EIA notification was issued in suppression of the earlier notification issued in 1994. The major difference herein is the attempt to decentralize power to the state governments. Earlier through EIA notification 1994, it was the central government and the central government only 
which was authorized to issue environmental clearances to the projects. Now, this notification decentralizes that power to the state governments. Uh, this notification also mandated mandatory requirement for prior environmental clearance before any construction work or preparation of land by the project proponent is made. For, for new projects, for expansion of projects, modernization, or even a change in product mix also requires mandatory prior environmental clearance. Uh, mind you, my prior within inverted commas. In this notification, two categories were made, namely category A and category B. Next. Uh, as I'll tell you later on, uh, how, how does this categorization goes on? But for the time being, it would be sufficient to mention that uh, Category A projects, which have been mentioned in this uh, notification, 2006 notification, they do not have to undergo screening process for EIA. And Category B projects, they have to undergo sc uh, screening process and are further classified into Category B1 and B2. Category B1 projects mandatorily re require EIA, while while B2 projects do not require EIA. Next. Next. Yeah. Category A projects, in, in such projects, EC has to be granted at the central level by MOEF and CC on the recommendation of Expert Appraisal Committee, EAC. Category B, which has been divided into B1 and B2. For B1, EC has to be granted at the state level by state level environmental impact assessment authority. We call it SIA. On the recommendation of state level Expert Appraisal Committee, SIAC. Uh, quite on the pattern of what has been designated at the central level. At the central wow. level, we, we just call it EAC. At the yeah. state level, we call SEAC. For B2 projects, EC has to be granted by DIA. DIA is District Environment Impact Assessment Authority and on the recommendation of District Environment Appraisal Committee. District Expert Appraisal Committee, district level. Uh, further, any project or activity specified in category B will be treated as category A if located in whole or in part within 10 kilometers from the boundary of the protected areas as notified under Wildlife Protection Act. Protected areas are uh, in common parlance we call national parks and sanctuary, wildlife sanctuaries. Then Central Pollution Control Board from time to time notifies the list of critically polluted areas. Uh, then eco-sensitive areas are also notified under Section 3 of the Environment Protection Act. EIA 2006 has been amended 67 times till date. Uh, this is huge number. Now. Uh, just um, I'll introduce EIA process as such. Stage one, screening, scoping, public consultation, appraisal. Next, screening is, uh, as I told you earlier, a screening is carried out for uh, only category B projects. Category A project, projects do not have to undergo this process of screening. SEAC, that is State Environment Appraisal Committee, scrutinizes the application and determines whether the project requires further environmental studies for preparation of EIA document for its appraisal, depending upon the nature and location of the projects. Projects requiring EIA study, category B1, 
projects not requiring EIA study is category B2. Next. Next, scoping. Scoping is uh, basically uh, for fixing the detailed terms of reference, addressing relevant environmental concerns for preparation of the EIA report. Uh, this, this is done by the EAC for category A projects and for category B1 projects, it is done by SIAC. Uh, at, at, at the scoping stage, uh, members of uh, the EAC or SIAC, they may go for site visit of the project. Public consultation is a very important part of EIA process uh, in which um, all the material concerns of local affected persons and other stakeholders are taken into account in the project design, et cetera. There are basically two components of public consultation. Uh, first is a public hearing at the site, at the project site, or in its closed, uh, close proximity, uh, as prescribed by the government, by the central government. Uh, they have notified a detailed procedure how to take up this public consultation. Uh, this, uh, this public consultation process is carried out by the State Pollution Control Board. Uh, after completion of the public consultation, the pub applicant shall address all the material and environmental concerns expressed during this process and make appropriate changes in the draft EIA and EMP. Appraisal is the final stage. It is the detailed scrut scrutiny by the EAC or CAC of the application and other documents like the final EIA report, outcome of the public consultations, including public hearing proceedings submitted by the applicant to the regulatory authority concerned for grant of environmental clearance. Appraisal is, is to be done in a transparent manner. On conclusion, EAC or SEAC shall make categorical recommendation to the regulatory authority either for the grant of prior EC on stipulated terms and conditions or rejection of the application for prior EC. Final EIA report, uh, it consists of the EIA report and the videotape or CD of the public hearing proceedings along with the project feasibility report. Next. Validity of environment clearance is uh, normally it is normally valid for five years. Exceptions are river valley projects. That, um, for these projects, it is 10 years, and for mining projects, it is 30 years. Now we'll talk specifically for mining projects, EIA for mining projects. Uh, the categorization into category A and B this has been amended quite recently. Earlier, the area was much lesser. Uh, in category A, you have more than 250 hectare of mining lease, major mineral other than coal. Then uh, in category A, we have uh, more than 500 hectare of mining lease for coal and asbestos mining irrespective of mining area. Uh, as for minor minerals, all mining leases are put in category B. Category A projects shall obtain EC from the central government as on the recommendation of EAC. Uh, EIA notification 2006 provides for subcategorization of B1 and B2 projects. That, uh, that, uh, that is almost reiteration. So, uh, please, please go ahead. This has been uh, in 2016 for sand mining and other minor mineral mining. They have classified different project, different mining projects uh, as category, uh, which, which will fall in category A, which will fall in category B1 or B2. 0 to 5 hectare, including cluster. 
it, it will be category B2. The clearance would be given by DIA on the recommendation of DIAC. More than five, five hectares and less than 25 hectares, including cluster with no individual lease more than five hectares, it will be category B2. Then more than or equal to 25 hectare, less than 50 hectare, it will again be category B1. And more than or equal to 50 hectare, including cluster with any of the individual lease more than or equal to 50 hectare, it will be category A, which will be referred to Government of India. Uh, this is the generic structure of EIA document. I think it is. Uh, very much available uh, in various notifications. Uh, I think I'll go, it, um, go through it very fast. Introduction, purpose of the report, identification of project and project proponent, brief description of nature, size, location of the project and its importance to the country, origin, scope of the study, details of regulatory scoping, Next, then project description. We have a uh, lot many things which, which you are supposed to mention in the EIA document. Type of project, need of project, location, size or magnitude, proposed schedule for approval and implementation, technology and process description, project description, including drawings, showing project layout, components of projects, etc. Then you have to give, uh, give a, a description of the environment. Here you have to uh, collect the baseline data. Uh, study, uh, 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 go to point number three, study area, then uh, period components and methodology. Then establishment of baseline for valued environmental components as identified in the scope. Then you have to prepare a base map for all environmental components. Next, anticipated environmental impacts and mitigation measures. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to prepare uh, details of investigated environmental impacts due to project location, possible accidents, project design, project construction, regular operations, final decommissioning or rehabilitation of a completed project. Measures for minimizing, and offsetting adverse impacts identified, irreversible and irretrievable commitments of environmental components, assessment of significance of impacts, then mitigation measures. In this uh, chapter, one has to analyze the alternatives uh, from both the angles, from technology angle and from site angle. Uh, at the scoping level, if it has been uh, if 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 it has been found by the appraisal committees that there is need to uh, carry out a study about alternatives, then one has to do it. Description of each al alternative, summary of adverse impacts of each alternative, mitigation measures proposed for each alternative, and selection of alternative. Next. Then we have environmental monitoring program. Uh, uh, this contains technical aspects of monitoring the effectiveness of mitigation measures, including measurement method methodologies, frequency, location, data analysis, reporting schedules, emergency procedures, detailed budget, and procurement schedules. Then additional studies at public consultation, risk assessment, social impact assessment, and r, &R. Project benefits, chapter eight is project benefits. Uh, how does it improve the physical infrastructure? How does it improve the social infrastructure? What is its employment potential? Skilled, semi-skilled or unskilled? And other tangible benefits. Next. Then we have uh, to carry out cost benefit analysis. If it is recommended at the scoping stage, then environmental management plan has to be prepared, which contains administrative aspects of ensuring how mitigative measures are to be implemented and how their effectiveness is 
uh, is to be monitored after approval of the EIA. Uh, then summary and conclusion, overall justification for implementation of the project, explanation of uh, how adverse effects have been mitigated. Then uh, the last chapter is disclosure of consultants engaged uh, for preparation of the EIA document. The names of the consultants engaged their resume and nature of consultancy. In fact, this, uh, these consultants have to be uh, accredited from NABET, that is a National Accreditation, Accreditation Board for Education and Training. Thank you. I think I have I, I, I not taken much of time. Thank you. No, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the enlightenment in respect of environment impact assessment. Sir, you have sufficiently deemed all criteria what is to be required to be followed by the mining operation. With this, I would like to call our last panelist in this discussion, Advocate Amit Dar, sir. Sir, you have to go through all the deliberation of the speakers. Speaker one and two and three all have to be in detailed uh, way analyze the uh, government initiative in, in respect of the sustainable mining. Now, sir, as a legal person, as an advocate, what you feel in respect of this uh, framework, how the court has response and how the lawmaker has response keeping in view the contemporary situation of mining. Sir, over to you. Sir, kindly unmute you, sir. Unmute can you, sir. Sir, Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Hope I'm audible now. I'm grateful to IFA University for giving me an opportunity to speak on this subject. Firstly, my greetings to Professor Rao, Rajiv Ranjanji, Salil Kujurji, Avijit Sinaji, and Alokji. At the very outset, I may confess, I have not done so much research work, I have not prepared any PPT, but I was only planning to speak on the subject keeping the legal aspects on in mind. Now the subject today is the legal and regulatory framework on the environmentally sustainable mining. The environmentally sustainable mining to me means the same thing as bursting green fireworks during Diwali. There cannot be any mining as per me without having any adverse impact on the environment. The attempt should be that how to minimize the adverse environmental impact by doing the mining activity. Because mining activity is inevitable. Unless we ex exploit the mineral resources of the country, we cannot develop. And for exploitation, the word exploitation itself shows that there is a ne negative impact Correspondingly on, the, correspondingly on the environment. Therefore, first we have to see what are the legal step, what steps the legislature has taken so as to minimize the environmental hazards due to mining activities and to restore the environmental conditions under the existing laws. Now, mining can be of two types, broadly speaking. One is legal mining, one is illegal mining. 
both have different impacts and different challenges on the environment first let us talk about the legal mining a legal mining is guided by the mmdr act the mmdr rules as well as the environment protection act the forest conservation act and other rules now under the mmdr act in the year 2003 the mineral conservation development rules 1998 was amended and there has been a requirement for submission of progressive mine closure plan and final mine closure plan these plans are required to be submitted so as to mention that what steps the mining company or a mining organization plans to take for reclamation rehabilitation of the environment after exhausting the mines or after completing the mines phase wise the first activity of a mine be it underground mining or be it a open cast mine is that surface area has to be broken so restoration of that means overburden is required to be dumped reef the mines are required to be refilled after it is exploited and thereafter afforestation is required to be done now first consciousness has to come to the state central and the state legislature once the consciousness comes to the legislature then the same would come to the executing agencies and lastly to the mining companies or mining organizations the consciousness of the legislature can be reflected from the legislative enactments and rules which are framed by the legislature from time to time now the legislature in discharge of their said responsibility have already framed the mines and mineral development regulation and development act which controls and which provides as to how a person can undergo a person or a company or an organization can undertake a mining activity what permissions it is required to take and for the purpose of those permissions what law they are required to follow now in in by the mmdr act and the rules ensure that mining operations are to be carried out in a scientific manner with a high degree of responsibility including responsibility in protecting and preserving the environment and the flora of the area though this process the holder of mining lease is obliged to adhere to the standards laid down under the environment protection act and the pollution laws because first be a person uh, uh, one has to apply for environmental clearance environmental clearance are granted subject to various conditions these conditions are required to be fulfilled and these conditions are with an object that the loss to the environment which is being which is likely to be caused due to mining activities is restored for mining activities over more than 5 hectares one is required to apply for environmental clearance before applying for mining lease others after grant of mining lease one can apply for but mining activity has to start only after grant of environmental clearance and grant of no objection under the pollution laws that is water pollution control act air pollution control act others there was a debate previously as to once when a environmental clearance has been granted mining activity has commenced whether there was a requirement to again apply for environmental clearance after uh after lapse of mining lease and at the time of seeking renewal of mining lease this issue was set at rest by the honorable supreme court in the year 2004 itself holding that no environmental clearance is required every time a company or a 
party applies for renewal of mining lease. The issue as to what is the effect of doing mining activities without obtaining environmental clearance was dealt in detail recently by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Common, versus, Common Cause versus Union of India, which is reported in 2017, Volume 9, SSC 499, wherein for the first time, Supreme Court says that even if you have a mining lease, but if the mining activity has continued without renewal of environmental clearance, then it amounts to illegal mining. And for illegal mining, the responsible person or company is to compensate the state under the MMDR Act, that is to pay amount equivalent to the value of mineral which has been mined. On that basis, several demands have been raised across the country and several litigations are still pending. As Shri Rajiv Ranjanji has said that environment impact assessment notifications are coming from time to time, which are putting, which are changing the conditions, imposing fresh conditions from time to time. The, mine, the law relating to mining, mining, law in itself is very dynamic, but law relating to mining is more dynamic because there is a fight, fight for creating a balance in the mining activities, which otherwise cannot be stopped, which is inevitable, and it is required for the development of the country and to maintain a balance with the, the protection of environment. And for that, from time to time, there are notifications issued by environment impact assessment, which are to be followed and complied with. High level committees are also constituted from time to time. First, HODA committee on the nation, national mineral policy had submitted their report on 20, in the year 2006, wherein also various recommendations were made, made and it was recommended that miner has to prepare two EMPs separately, one for Indian Bureau of Mines and another for Ministry of Forest and Environment. The committee suggested that Indian Bureau of Mines and Ministry of Environment and Forest should prepare guidelines for a composite EMP so that IBM can approve the same in consultation with the Ministry of Environment and Forest so that both can deliberate on the issues and before giving environmental clearance, all aspects are looked from better perspective. The impact of mining on the environment is large. It not only has an adverse impact on the flora and the fauna, but also causes displacement to large number of people not because of acquisition of land alone, but also because of disturbance of groundwater, pollution of groundwater. And for that, as Sri Sandeep Kujurji had stated, that CSR policies are there under which the mining companies are required to take corrective measures, provide facilities, take steps for rehabilitation of the displaced persons, who are displaced because of the adverse impact on the environment due to such mining activities. Similarly, for regulatory frameworks, Green Tribunal is there. The Ministry of Forest and Environment is issuing notifications, regulations from time to time so as to create a balance and to ensure that minimum In, uh, minimum damage is done to the environment by undertaking the mining activities under different by by different companies the impact of in on the environment varies from the mi mineral to mineral with respect to coal the impact is different similarly with respect to ores of copper, ores of gold, the impact on the environment is different, the challenges are different, and 
the corrective measures are also required to change from mineral to mineral and nature of mining which is being undertaken the concept of mining is also changing day by day previously more of underground mining activities were being undertaken now the concept of open cast mining has been introduced wherein the surface is broken minerals are brought out and thereafter surface is again refilled by the overburden this as per the research shows that has a lesser impact on the environment than complete underground mining but in case of some minerals underground mining is inevitable and in such cases of underground mining even the ground water table gets disturbed and restoration of the same becomes a challenge so far as other laws are concerned the state legislature is also enacting different legislations from time to time to create uh, to check the adverse impact on the environment but the challenges change different uh, challenges totally change in case of illegal mining illegal mining neither there is any mining plan on record nor there is any control over the persons who are undertaking the mining activities but at the same time illegal mining is a cannot be ignored and nobody can deny that in any state no illegal mining is taking place rather illegal mining is in fact a crime which is being committed in a most organized manner for such cases as for instance in the state of jharkhand the mineral transit jharkhand mineral transit rules have been framed in the year 2017 under this rules whenever a person is required to transport mine uh, minerals from one spot to another they have to get themselves registered under the jimms portal once they get themselves registered under the jimms portal then entire movement of the mineral is regulated if any vehicle is found transporting coal with under whatever on the strength of whatever document they may have but if they don't they are not registered under the jimms portal then there is a presumption that it is undertaking or transporting illegally mined minerals in this manner there is a check on the movement of minerals once the movement of minerals are checked then naturally the demand of illegally mined mineral gets low and the, there is a corresponding check in the illegal mining similarly there is another rule enacted by the state of jharkhand that is jhar preven jharkhand forest produce transit rules these rules also prevent transit of any forest produce which also includes minerals without be payment of forest transit fee and forest transit fee once it is to be paid then they for the purpose of payment of the same the person seeking to transport forest produce has to show the source of it the justification source of it its payment of corresponding payment of royalty and other documents and in this manner the check has been uh, to some extent state legislature has succeeded in putting a check to the illegal mines and illegal mining activities having adverse impact on the environment in the state of jharkhand similar leg legislations have also been made in the other states also and the validity of such legislations have already been upheld by the honorable supreme court the latest judgment in this issue with respect to forest transit forest produce transit rules is the up judgment that is reported in 2018 volume 14 scc wherein the honorable supreme court has upheld the up 
forest transit forest produce transit rules which is perimeteria with the jharkhand rules thus in this manner we see that so far as this legislature is concerned legislature has been discharging their obligations and their duty by framing law amend law bringing their i mean necessary amendments from time to time to ensure that whatever mining activity which is going on in the state is environmentally sustainable secondly the second role comes on the executive executing agencies with respect to the executing agencies shri rajiv ranjan ji and shri salil sandeep kujur ji had explained in detail that how the executing agencies are implementing these rules and issuing notifications and regulations from time to time and what are the guidelines being issued for the purpose of either applying for mining lease and for the purpose of seeking renewal of mining lease and how the marks are being allotted to the applicants for grant or seeking renewal of mining lease now the third responsibility comes to the mining act, mining companies in this regard avijit sinha ji has also drilled in detail that how the mining activities and the mining companies are also taking care of ensuring that there is environmentally sustainable mining once this consciousness developed first on the legislature second on the executing agency and third on the mining company then naturally the mining activities can be carried out in such a manner so that to ensure that there is minimum damage done to the environment and the mining activities are environmentally sustainable thank you thank you sir uh, you have also done my job uh, very uh, let's as you have concluded this whole discussion that the first is environmentally sustainable mining is a prerequisite for all laws and legislations as well as the court's decision second the responsibility of the executing agency on whom the duty is to be casted so far as all the clearance is concerned number 3 that there is a scientific technology being introduced for the mining operation number overall the consensus among all these three or the uh, collective effects of all these factors is to be made for the purpose of environmentally sustainable mining now i request all the participant to please uh, i we are sharing the feedback form so kindly be please fill up this feedback form and finally i would like to invite our vice chancellor sir professor waris rao sir for the closing remark of the discussion sir sir excuse me this is manish kumar jadhar can i have a question from these leading experts yes yes sir? yes 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 manish sir please please you are invited to uh, we are ready to take the question but since we have seen yes. that uh, we have already exceeded the time but please please sir please it will take 2 minutes sir i have a query okay okay please please please, please 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 expert which hey, this yes. opportunity we do not get regularly sir okay okay please manish sir please sir there are uh, i am uh, listening to all the uh, distinguished speakers and all these legislative frameworks and uh, rules and regulations which are in place i just wanted to know how this uh, dmft district mining fund trust work under this uh, uh, minerals and uh, mining and minerals development act it is actually uh, established at the district level dmft yes. which are to take care of these uh, those people for welfare of those people who are displaced by these mining activities and also to maintain the environment sustain uh, sustainability so how does it function and what are the roles of these stakeholders and what is the accountability there of these three points i just wanted to know from the forum thank you the district mining mineral funds so far as this is to be concerned that is to be framework under the mine and mineral regulatory development act 1957 and that this is to be introduced very recently in the year 2015 where uh, all 
district concerned where the mining operation is to be going on to establish this kind of fund i hope so uh, if any panelists want to take uh, this question they can answer So, for us, the district uh, minister founded. Okay, 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 Mr. Das, please go. Go ahead. Uh, Rajiv Anjanji, please, please, please. No, no, you, 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 uh section 9b of uh, the mmdr act and its amendment in 2015 ye ye provide karta hai district mineral fund ka iska objective jo hai uh ye hai the primary goal is to work for the welfare of uh, of those areas and individuals that have been impacted by mining as per the state's prescription there has been a lot of controversy about this uh that uh, the collectors of certain districts they have been using this uh, funds for uh, activities which are not permitted in fact the government of india has made some rules in this regard also how to how to operate this uh, fund and uh, how 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 to restrict the misuse of the funds because we have crores of rupees lying uh unspent either misspent or unspent in uh, various districts of our country in fact in some states what has happened is uh, dmf of district a has been spent in district b which doesn't have a, a mine at all this is uh, this is gross irregularity on the part of our political uh, dispensation and other executives anything uh, uh, mr das you would you please uh, like to add something no actually district mineral fund fund it has to be spent in a manner as has been provided in the rules there cannot be any deviation and there has to be a unless the rules permit it has to be used only for the purpose of the development of the mining areas for and these funds are being collected by, by way of compensation only Yes, sir. That is there. The whole is true. Actually, I also wanted to point out about this utilization of these funds. As uh, uh, Rajiv Ranjan sir uh, rightly pointed out, that is the whole issue. Because until unless it is used for the targeted groups rather than for own uh, own uh, narrow goals, it will not attain uh, the uh, the uh, uh, aim of uh, environmental sustainability. Actually, that is. That's why I just wanted to raise this before this August forum. Thank you, sir. Thank you for making such discussion lively. And uh, I would like to now call our vice chancellor, sir, for closing the discussion. Sir, if you are available. We also request to all the participant for please fill up the feedback form. Meanwhile, Now with this, uh, we we are comes to end the discussion, and we concluded the session with a very deep sense of gratitude to all our panelists, because without uh, giving your valuable time, 
this discussion cannot be a fruitful in a manner which, which we have planned and which we have looked into. Sir, we are very thankful to Rajiv Ranjan, sir. We are very thankful to Amit Das, sir. We are very thankful for San Salim Sandeep Pujur, sir. We are very thankful to Abhijit, sir, for giving your precious time and your valuable time and be with us for that discussion. And we hope in future we will have to continue it because this is just an introduction of this topic, we know. And we are planning in that regard to frame some certificate course for mining professional. In this contest, we are also asking some questions in feedback form. Let's see the response that what are there. University is very serious so far as they established their sustainable development center. And keeping in view this sustainable development center, this webinar is being planned for the sustainable mining. We will have to plan to move further in that regard in future and surely we will have to inform all these development to all the panelists because this discussion is really a very fruitful as well as our knowledge kind of thing we will have to receive. So with this, I, Dr. Alok Kumar, on behalf of the Kainos Jharkhand, thankful to all the panelists who have given valuable time for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. We now conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Alok sir. Alok sir. Hello. Haan, please. Alok sir, बहुत अच्छा रहा आपका webinar. Haan, right. Thank you. Very learned part. the panelists they were very learned. Ah. And I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot from them. So, you, we will have to discuss, sir. We have phone get now, sir. We will have a discussion. Thank sir, you. Sir, what is your PPT available? Yes, yes, yes. We will share it, sir. Now, the yeah, thing is very good. Yes, it's very good. Okay. 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 Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sir, it has been a lively discussion on sir, uh, for aspects of, sir. sir, it has been a very lively discussion ah, on the sir. mining aspects. So uh, we would like to move, we like to go further into certain topics. Sir. Like uh, the Kujur Saab has pointed out a lot of things which are quite new. And uh, I think uh, we will like to have more such webinars to give yes. further uh, idea in a uh, deeper uh, way. And yes. uh, many concepts uh, which have come across like CSR and mm. like exploration. So uh, what's the role of uh, exploration and CSR? Uh, is the exploration being one of the part of the mining activities, uh, whether it can be done by CSR fund of the same company or for the general good. Uh, so a lot of things, a lot of questions uh, still remain. So yeah, we like to, yeah. So uh, we would like to have the feedback form set. It's not available on this, this site. Sir, uh, that is in the chat box, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I'm not finding it, sir. Sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, can it be shared separately in the group, sir? Ah, yes, we can also say. And uh, sir, please give time for filling it, sir. Okay. We will also Thank you, be shared with you. We have shared. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you.